This is Code Org. Let's see what we have here. In data reader, write method get double that returns the primitive double value of the parameter number. Ah, this is sounding familiar. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So this means what do we have here? We have a static method, which means we can call it without instantiating this. We need to return this data type, which is double, which is a primitive. I'll get into that in a second. And we are past a wrapper class. Uh, or a double, which is not a primitive. It's an instantiation. It's an object, and it's instantiation of a class. What do I mean by that? All right, let's talk. Double x equals new double 8.2, or whatever, 8.3, and double y equals 8.3 are entirely different things. This is a primitive data type. This is represented just by zeros and ones. That's all that is stored in memory for the value y. Whatever zeros and ones represent this number. This, though, is an instantiation of a class. What class? I'm glad you asked. The double class. And here it is. This is the documentation by Oracle. A bit more complex, but I just want to show you it's a real thing. And when you think of a class, look, it has access to multiple methods. I could do dot compare to. I can do double value. I can do getting a float value. I can get a hash code. And so for all of this, I could just do X. I don't know what that was, what, get hash code, right? It has access to all of these other methods because it's a data, because it's a wrapper class, it's an instantiate class. Whereas Y would not have access to any of these methods because all it is is a literal representation of that data. That is the distinction between these. Okay, now that being said, let's get into what we're doing. We have the object number being passed and we need to return a primitive type. Let's go to our documentation and double. And so let's, see, let's look at the methods. Oh, here we go. Parse double, it returns a new, nope. Double value, returns a double value of a double object. That sounds promising. Notice it's not static, so we need to run it on the instantiated class number. Okay, and so it looks like I can do return number dot double value. And the reason I'm saying this, the reason I believe this is true, is because it says right here, double, double value, it returns a double, what do we need? That of a double value object. What is this? Double object. Okay, that one's done. Now let's take a look down here, convert a list. And I bet, yes. So we're going to need to loop through this list and create, what do we start with? A list of strings. What do we need to end with? A double array. So I'm going to create a double array, double, and I'll just call mine, uh, I don't know, double. We can call this whatever we want, array, whatever, double R. Sure. I'm creative with my naming. That's not true. Equals uh, new double Double, and then I need to put the length. Thankfully, we know it. It's list.length because I know it needs to have exactly the same amount of data as this list does, just not as a string. So I'm going to use a for loop. Great example right here of one. Let me hammer one out. I guess double r.length. We could use list.length to the same. i plus plus because we want to go up by one index each time because we want to go through all of them. And then I'm going to assign double r, whatever index I'm at, i equal to uh, list i. Now, obviously, this is going to break. List is a string. I can't just loop through this one by one and giving it all the string values. I need to do some conversion. So handy dandy documentation and double. And let's see, we return a double, promising, initialized to the value represented by a string. Now, notice this is a static method, meaning we can call it directly, which is good because we don't have access to anything that is currently a double object within this method, right? We just have a string. So that's great. We can do double dot since it's static. Let's see, parse double, and I should be able to call it like this. That way we can loop through all the items in our string list, convert them right here to doubles and assign them two indexes of our double array. Of course, we don't want to forget to return this. All right, I'm sure I've broken something. Let's take a look. Uh, instantiate. Call get double, okay. 
And remember, our get double method is part of the data reader class. So, um, and print the result. I'll just do bam, and then I need to print it. I could put whatever here. I think it's cleaner just to write the word result for clarity. All right, let's see what's broken thus far. Oh, that's looking promising. Okay, now I need to convert list and print it. So let's just call it R or array. And then the list we want to pass it, they provide us a list of strings here or an array of strings, values. And then I'm going to print it. I believe, though, did I see? Yes, they also gave us a way to print this so we don't have to do it ourselves, which is cool. Thank you, code.org. And I'm going to print R, which is array. Let's see if I broke it. I did. Ah, typo. Of course it's a typo. Awesome. And there we have it. Ba-da, ba-da. So these classes are going to become increasingly useful as we move through the course. Uh, but yeah, all that looks good. Onward.